So, uh, I started working on, again on the project manager uh, back when I had everything in fossil repositories. If you ever checked those out, you may have noticed there was some attempts at it that I abandoned. Um, picking that back up. Uh, now, this is something I had implemented uh, like two, three years ago, but like so much of the other stuff, it really needs to be rewritten well before a public release. And so that's that's what I've been doing. Uh, the original implementation was bad. Quite bad. Um, but nonetheless, the approach it's taking is basically the same. Now, I do want to take a bit of time to explain exactly how this is going to work because it's different than you might expect. Uh, it's definitely considerably different from GPRs, which would be important because why implement something that already exists? GPRs do what GPRs do well, well. I know that's a ridiculous thing to say, but that's... <laughs> They're really good for building like firmware and stuff for embedded systems they're not good for what I'm trying to do so a little tiny little bit of background information about Ada just just to get anybody who's stumbling across this not familiar with Ada familiar up to speed Ida essentially has three different types of um, files that can exist for it. You have the program, which is just either a uh, one of two different types of blocks, basically. You have a procedure. Or a function. And it's either one of these, not both. That's important to understand. But then you also have, if I could spell, a package. Actually, that, that looks really bad. Let's... There we go. Much, much better. The, the double E, not so much, but... <laughs> Apparently, I write like I type. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, with a package, you must have a specification... So we can do that as spec. But then there's an optional body. And how would I represent this exactly? I guess that works. So then just to reiterate, a program you either have a procedure or a function, but regardless it's a program. And then for a package you have to have a specification and you may have a body depending on what is in the specification. It's this that's interesting. This is straightforward. Uh, building that is easy and doesn't even need a project manager. Building this is where it gets a little bit interesting.
so one thing that is important I would say should be required uh, Idacore says sort of sort of optional the naming rules are very sophisticated for GPRs so you can get away with um, you, you can get away with unique names for each of these but I would strongly recommend against it and I, like for what I'm doing it's going to be required that they have the same name so you would have something like example dot a d s and then if it actually implemented a body you would also have an example dot a d b for the spec and the body respectively inside of there you would also see the um, this name should be present as the actual package name now GPRs do enforce that kind of behavior in fact basically NAT in general enforces that kind of behavior um, again with some of the naming pragma stuff you can you can get away without that though the way The way projects are normally built in ADA, at least using GPRs, anything else uh, even remotely associated with this example package would also be built together. So if we have another package of, say, foo.ads, and then another one of say bar dot ads but there's no associated body with this using the normal GPR method uh, uh, the GPR projects all three of these would be built into the library which might just be called something like um, Like example dot so for you know shared libraries under Linux, um, it'd be a DLL under Windows. I think Mac. I know they're Mac OS, but I'm not sure what the extension, if any, is for that. So if you're only a Mac developer, I'm sorry, I don't know what it would be, but it's whatever the library is you know it's, it's all built into one uh, large shared object and this this can be appropriate behavior in many instances but one of the one of the nice things about the way shared objects work is they're shared they they link together and hence, hence the name um, dynamic link library uh, with the window with the windows ones but they're not the only type that implements dynamic linking what I've been able to do manually and would like to have better automated is instead of this whoa have them each into their own shared object and then any links between them can be established so let's say example depends on bar and so then anytime bar uh, the the bar package or bar library was loaded only that would be loaded 
but if example.so was loaded, then it would, just because of the way the linker works, also have to load bar.so and foo.so. This might seem like a little bit of an overcomplication, but what it allows us to do is replacing the specific libraries. And because each package is built into a specific library, you can replace, essentially, at the like conceptually at the source level, a replacement of the package is also just a replacement of the library, or vice versa. This is... important because when you want to do optimization for say specific instruction sets say um, the AMD 64 architecture the uh, you know extension to the 80686 it um, You want to do something like array math, linear algebra. You can, of course, iterate through step by step and calculate each number individually and go through the entire amount like that. It's fine. It gets the job done. It's obviously not the most efficient way of doing it, but it definitely gets the job done. Now, in a system that doesn't support this fine-grained creation of libraries, what you would often do is some type of check for whether those features are supported and have them in the, in the, in the library so that if they are supported, it happens. But if they are not, the default, co uh, the default that will work on anything, in this case the iteration through the arrays, happens. That's fine. But you do have, in order to calculate anything, additional branches that are occurring, because that's, that's what the if-else stuff is, is uh, fundamentally a branch. This can be rather problematic if a branch misprediction occurs. Now, you would hope that a good compiler can recognize these types of things. Uh, I've personally seen instances where it doesn't, although admittedly most of the time it's good about getting it. But this also does lead to some code bloat. Because you know, if you think about it, all the, all the uh, checks and the stuff that would be uh, happen if that check comes to true have to be put in there. Now, of course, a slightly better approach to it is conditional compilation, where you build it for the target architecture and only the relevant stuff goes in there. That's certainly uh, a much, much better uh, approach to this. And notwithstanding a few other issues would totally accomplish what I want to do here. It's the other issues that is why conditional compilation is not enough. Because uh, there is a NAT preprocessor that I could use for conditional compilation. Where it gets a little bit more complicated is when you have legacy code is a great example. If these things are built with a good degree of modularity, replacing one of the libraries, say for array math, of a pre-built executable to where that library now does simd instructions that executable will automatically start doing the simd instructions this is one of the biggest benefits to shared libraries but the there's two issues that are commonly faced with that one is that the interfaces break easily in some languages. Uh, C++ is notorious for having the interface break uh, regularly. 
Now, there are ways to help that not happen. But IDID happens to do a really good job of keeping very consistent interfaces. And in large part, that's due to having these separate uh, specification and bodies. It's not the only language to do so, but it definitely helps. Um, also worth noting, the separate specification and bodies is not enough. Uh, C++ has its separate headers and bodies, and the uh, the interface still breaks regularly with C++. So it, it's not enough to have that. Uh, there has to be a number of uh, under the uh, under the hood st things going on to help ensure that the interface remains consistent. But um, the presence of ALI files and other things help immensely with that as well. Uh, for those not aware, ALI files are essentially add a library files. They're a table of sorts for what the library has at the source level and where it is in the library, more or less. Uh, it's, a, it's more complicated than that, but it, it, it's essentially a lookup table for the library uh, to help provide that consistent interface. So one of the other reasons to have the high degree of uh, modularity, though, is with licensing. There is definitely not even close to an agreement when it comes to licensing. And at least with me, I'm definitely very comfortable releasing my code under very liberal open source licenses. I tend to avoid the GPL like the plague. That being said, I also tend to avoid a few other uh, open source licenses like the plague, but most of my stuff is available under one of the BSD 2, 3, or 4 clause licenses. Exactly which depends on the project, though. But that doesn't mean that all of what I write is. Some of what I write is definitely closed source, and there are businesses that would like to do the same. In that kind of instance, if everything's well modularized, what we would be able to do is say, like my mathematics packages, uh, all of the stuff that I've developed hasn't been rewritten yet, but even now, even currently, you can see that there's quite a bit in there. If a business wanted to come along and provide, or e even just another developer, an, an entity, just somebody, something, wanted to provide one of those packages with the same specification but a different body and have the body closed sourced, they would be able to do a drop-in replacement of just that package and not have to redistribute the entire thing. So, really, with existing package managers, there's nothing stopping you from doing this. It's just an insane amount of work. Uh, using GPRs, you would have to create a GPR for every single package so that it's built as its own unique library. That is a lot of work. Um, furthermore, because the GPRs have project dependencies, you have to specify each project library and it just becomes this huge maintenance nightmare. But I've noticed something when it comes to IDA source files. Other languages too, but we're talking specifically about managing IDA projects. Mm, I don't want to do that. That works. There we go. Forget my own program sometimes. 
Generally speaking, the layout of an ADA project looks, or an ADA package, looks something like this. Fair enough, simple enough, but then you have the dependencies up here. Now this should not be surprising to basically anyone, because almost any programming language has them up here. Instead of having these projects figure out what they depend on, we can use the actual with declarations make that eye there more visible, to gather up all of these and create a dependencies list. Not of the projects it depends on, but of the packages it depends on. Now, I would like to be able to build the entire at a standard library using this package manager but even in the meantime as kinks are worked out and everything it would be possible to since the edit standard library exists as a built library on any distribution anyways just sort of silently discard any of the standard library packages but still include in the non-standard packages that are declared. As long as these packages are in a visible location, such as the IDA include path and the IDA objects path, you would be able to uh, appropriately build with them and link to them. Then, because of this, you can automatically inject the appropriate flags into the compiler argument and yeah into the compiler arguments on the command line so that all of this just sort of happens now I sort of got big on this before it became cool because you know fucking nerdy hipster please kill me but in recent years, it's sort of become trendy to treat the folder as the project. I get this from way back, having grown up on BOS, where, because of tagging and other stuff, the file system was actually, like, really powerful from an end-user standpoint. But uh, you know, I, I got used to viewing folders as more than just folders. And, and so it, 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 if you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense to treat the folder as the project. So you can have the project manager just go, okay, let's find all of the data sources in this folder. They're all the project files. Done. If you have a more complicated setup than that, this project management tool is probably not going to be what you need anyways, and you're probably going to want to be using GPRs or make files. See, what I've designed and then now re-implementing in a better way, because, oh my god, it was so bad, <laughs> um is designed around being really easy to build libraries which is something overwhelmingly project managers sort of skip sort of don't care about it's almost like an afterthought if you ever really think about it and look into like the documentation of different project managers whether it's GPR or the um, MS build or any of these things it's overwhelmingly about building executables, building programs, which is fine. 
I just think we can do a little bit better, especially when so much of this stuff is marked up in the source code already. Now I do, I have been implementing some of this. Uh, I just started today, so not a whole lot exists yet. Um, I am developing this in C Sharp, uh, mostly just because it's going to be considerably easier for me to get this up and running in C Sharp. Um, I'd be willing to do a rewrite into IDA in time, but quite frankly, it's not a high priority. Having the working project manager is a considerably higher priority than what language it's written in. Um, one of the other things that it being in C Sharp enables me to do very easily is have an appropriate PowerShell module for it. Uh, the standard uh, program with like very, you know, POSIX syntax uh, would be very easy to generate anyways. Uh, it's the PowerShell syntax that I'm a little bit more worried about because uh, I would like, would very much like to uh, have that be properly Im implemented. So hopefully in the next few days you start to see a little bit of pre uh, showcases over what this project manager can do. Uh, right now it's not a whole lot, but uh, I've almost got the dependency lookups working correctly, so it's coming. See ya!